Hi everybody, I'm the SolidWorks Nerd, and today we're going to be looking at the Aku Aku Mask from Crash Bandicoot 1. I'm going to do this one in a review style because originally I was planning to do the model from scratch right before your very eyes. But I figured for this model at least it would take a little bit too long. So I instead decided to go with a review method and I think that would be a little bit quicker. But if you don't think that this was enough explanation, just let me know and I'll be glad to elaborate some more. Alright, so let's start by taking the rollback bar and of course rolling it back all the way to the first sketch, which I have hidden at this point because it covers a face of the model. But um, clicking the glasses will of course unhide that sketch and we can see our sketch has um, an imported sketch picture and I like using the sketch picture a lot because uh, for a lot of the geometry it is very difficult to recreate just by looking at the model and it's hard to place a lot of those dimensions down so unless you really you, you really have good depth perception or you have like a model of something physical right in front of you and a pair of dial calipers there's nothing wrong with doing it that way I've done it that way too um, this is mostly the way to go when making things like this the only thing you gotta be wary of is um, especially with video game art such as this a lot of it will have some perspective to it and if the perspective is too um, let me say extreme then then the model will look right if you attach lines to exact models, uh, exact edges in the pictures. So as we can see, um, this picture actually does have a little bit of perspective. Like you could see the side of his face right here as represented by the shadow. But since the mask is so thin, um, it, it is um, quite easy to work with, especially when you keep in mind that the fact that this does have a little bit of perspective to it. So First thing I did was, of course, um, outlined his edges, and you can see what what I mean when I highlight this sketch, is that when I um, started putting down some lines, I only came up to this first edge right here, and not this back one, because um, this edge back here lies on a different plane, and will be the back edge to the boss extrude. So, keeping that in mind, I um, believe I have that on suppress and yes we do see our lovely boss extrude back there and simple enough so all I did over here was kind of trace out the eyebrow well of course on this side and just extruded it and I think I, I think that is an inch thick and yeah for some reason I have this in angstroms which I gotta go change but anyway yes that is an inch so, you could see in my Speedyworks video, when I <clears throat> did my first run through of this, um, I tried a, a body copy as well as a move, which didn't work out too well because I failed to realize that this second eyebrow is a little bit bigger than the first and is slightly different shape. The, the, um, it's a little bit skewed. So anyway, um, I just buckled down, you know, did the same thing trace the sketch out and extruded it out. Simple enough and of course I applied the appropriate colors, nothing too fancy. I could probably go with a color picker, you know, get get the red, green, blue numbers. But no, I just um, picked, picked a color from the standard colors that SolidWorks gives me. So now I make a plane and the reason I do that is there's going to be other features that I don't want to um, extrude quite as high and uh, this will set me up for the loft which you need two sketches from two sketches for so next feature is a loft and um, you could see I struggled with this one in my speedy works video um, so I tried doing every single little edge and, and um, lofting up to a circle and that didn't look too good and tried just a plain circle didn't look good either but I just kind of went with uh, kind of the average eyes the, the average um, edges of the eye and just extruded up to a circle 
So you can see it's showing up in this wood texture. So if I turn on zebra stripes, which is um, an important tool when you're working with uh, curved surfaces, you could see that this, of, of course, this circular surface is uh, perfectly flat, which kind of gives it an odd appearance. So if I take a look at that, it doesn't, really doesn't look very good. So what I did was um, opened up the surfaces tab over here and uh, perform the delete face and I don't choose uh, delete delete and del uh, delete or fill or delete and patch instead um, I tried a, a surface fill so by itself so I can um, play with the settings to get it exactly where I want so you could see it has a bit of a more curved appearance so going back into evaluate zebra stripes and you could see it, it blends a lot better now of course, you still got some sharp edges, but I think it really helps the aesthetic. So I just knit the surface together, and you can see that that I um, it has like a gem-like appearance, and I think it looks pretty cool. And that's the important thing when you do stuff like this is um, it's whatever looks good to you. So similar fashion, I do the the eye in the same in the same way. You know, surface fill, surface knit, and he's got two eyes now. Good. All right. So one thing you can do with surfaces, and one thing that I like to do is, um, I tackled this uh, this paint, this I guess tribal paint, and you could see in the sketch picture it does have some perspective, got some three D geometry associated with it. So I just used a surface, uh, a boundary surface. Eventually, excuse me, I used a boundary surface to um, map two sketches that just kind of follow the curves. But before I did that, I did a surface extrude. And if I hide this and I just hovered over that, you see there's our hidden surface. And the advantage to having surfaces like this is um, when you're um, in the boundary surface command and you have these uh, extrude surfaces existing, you can actually pick it and do all kinds of relations to it and I'll by all kinds I mean either t tangent or curvature so anyway it gives you a little bit more options and a little bit more control of that surface so you could see um, I have the surf um, excuse me the sketches along the eye paint selected and then with that I just create a um, create a boundary surface and I just went ahead and just played with the settings you know um, with tangent you could uh, play with uh, tangent influence so the more of that the more it'll stick out so yeah you just you just kind of play around with those and you just see what looks good so as you can see sometimes surfaces uh, act kind of wonky when you try and pin pin them to a really sharp corner so in this case, I avoided that knowing this. So you can see there are these two open ends. So all I do was, you know, create a tangent surface fill to really, to really close them up. Surface fill. Yeah, and with this one, I left this hole um, quite large. So I had to um, sketch on, on the front plane. You know, put a spline there, and I sewed it up with a surface fill and the planar surface you don't see it here but it that's the one that closes the back up because because we eventually knit the surface to yeah, knit the surfaces together to make it solid because this is what we want in the end it makes it for example 3d printable because you can't print a surface It'd be very interesting if you could I wonder how that looked like Anyway, so this one I decided to be a little more uh, devious, I guess you could say. So I did the thing that I just said uh, that can make surfaces act wonky. And I just uh, straight up, you know, one sketch has this general profile over here. And I just tied it together to make a, a two-side opening to um, sew together with the surface 
and I don't use a surface extrude either. So this one was me being a little, I guess, adventurous. So um, especially with geometry like this, it doesn't have to be so readily controlled. So you could see it, it kind of acts a little bit crazier, and you can see with zebra stripes, it's got, it's got some lumps in it. But I think it, I think it really brings the, you know, thick tribal paint appearance. So I'm actually pretty satisfied with this result over here. I knit the surface together, of course, after adding a planar surface in the back, and I just keep on going. So I add a new plane, and I did that two inches above the surface, and this is in preparation for the nose. And what I do for the nose is I just go for another loft. So the first profile, and this is and this is very interesting. So I did the the profile of the nose on the surface on the surface of his face which I had to guess a little bit because of the perspective the front part of his nose blocks what that what that profile actually is so I'm gonna unsuppress the loft command and that's kind of what I drew that's just my best guess of what's under there I mean I think I think it's typically what a nose looks like and then on the two inch uh, plane, the offset two inch plane, I just put a point down there. And with that, lofting those two together gives it this sharp angular appearance. While it just curves, really tor curves towards it, like, almost like a witch's nose. And I'm pretty satisfied of how this came out. So next thing I do is I tackle the lips. So. I use the original plane that I use for the eyes, so they're more or less the same height. Well, actually, they're exactly the same height. So I first draw on his face, and I do a spline, and just kind of follow follow the sketch picture there. And then I go to the offset plane, and I and I follow the top part of his lips, and I also do that for the part of his lips that are closest to his teeth. And then what I do is, you know, I close them up with boundary surfaces. I like my boundary surfaces. I think they're very, very powerful tool in SolidWorks. So upon closing them up, you could see um, I was pretty satisfied with this appearance, actually. So I use a planar surface for the back. And you could see, because of the cross section, um, I have this open piece of geometry here, so I just surface fill them close. And I do the same thing. Well, there it is. And I do the same thing for the other side. There we go. And I knit them together. And and then for the bottom part of the lips, I actually did not use surfaces. So I tried to use a, use a loft just to see what how that would uh, happen. And you could see it's a pretty good opportunity because you have one profile that cleanly blends into another one and this is one of the this is one of the parts where you really got to be careful with the perspective because uh, we're looking at him where from Aku Aku's perspective he's a little bit turned to the right with respect to us so you could see that the top part of top part of his lip this left edge coincides with the profile that is nearest his face so you just um, have to be careful with stuff like that. So when I drew my profiles for the loft, what I did was, um, since I was drawing on his face, I followed it exactly. But the one that was offset, I, I bring this left edge back a little bit this way. So when we make him face, face us straight, his lip is not, he's not over to the side or anything like that. So um, I think the... I think the result speaks for itself. I think very satisfied with it. And um, here comes a part that I wasn't exactly proud of. So I w I'm going to look in to see if I can find an easier way to do his beard better than the way that I did. So my first idea, and, it, and you could see me struggle in the SpeedyWorks video a little bit, is I tried to do a loft, but was met with the error that said 
um, you can't form, you, you can't transition between a profile that is open and a profile, profile that is open and a profile that is closed. So, so the closed profile was um, the one right on his face. I outlined his beard and a closed profile was a 3D sketch that followed this center line down here and gave it some perspective. And I could not get that loft to complete. So uh, per perhaps I will make another video seeing if I do find a solution. That was, of course, better than mine. There probably is. Um, I will post that. But what I had to end up doing is I had those two sketches up and by using 3D sketches, I literally sketched to every point and made a triangle. So, base and I and when I had that triangle there, I then surface filled them shut. So I was building his beard polygon by polygon, which, as you can tell, is not very efficient and took quite a bit of time. I probably could have saved half an hour if I didn't have to do this. So I'm gonna skip down the feature tree and there's all my polygons a lot of polygons my friends so I knit them together and mirror to give his beard some depth on the other side and I knit them together and give it some color all right and that is uh, largely what his facial features are oh then I go into the teeth now which I also had trouble with so initially I made the first tooth and I thought I could be lazy and I did a linear pattern and I tried to fix it up with body copy and move without the copy part of course. But the first tooth just it's too different from the other teeth. So I was forced to swallow my own pride and make every tooth by itself. But um, I did get to use body copy and move eventually so of course I'd had an extrude surface going to the back this is what I really want to control so I can get really get that tooth shape and this bottom this bottom profile is just a 3d sketch um, that I closed here I'll show you give you a closer look at that uh, okay that's a surface extrude so let me go one feature more oops and yeah, so it goes from the edge of the surface extrude to this 3D sketch, and we open it up. Not rename, but open it. Yeah. So, I just put a spline, 3D spline, and staple it to the end of that other spline that is on the, that is on the face. And when when you do that it looks like a line but then you can drag the handles around and get a very specific shape it's one of my favorite techniques and I will make a video really looking into into how that works so we'll go out of that 3D sketch and you can see it updated after I change it no big deal so surface fill that was filling in the back surface fill for the front you could also use surface fills as planar surfaces if you just choose a boundary condition and your edges are uh, and your edges lie in the same plane definitely an option so you can see I have the two shaped there and I knit them together give it some color and I just rinse and repeat for these four teeth so down the feature tree we go and I went too far so I had this pro I had this set of teeth over here and this is where the body copy and move came in handy because his bottom lip over here covers well while it covers what his bottom set of gums look like then I could just easily you know rotate it around with a copy and just move them down there and you don't have to worry about them looking the same or not because his bottom lip is there to cover so and that's where my laziness kind of paid off so this next set of extrudes and allow me to unhide one of the bodies the very first body yes you are gonna have a body to put all those facial features on kind of like mr. potato head in a way so 
next thing I tackled was the feathers. And um, I didn't go into too much detail, you know, trying to get every single every single nuance. I mean, of course you can. You could spend a, a lot more time doing that. But I think just a simple representation with a spline. Just had a spline go and loop back on itself. Yeah, let's let's open it. Let's let's look at it. So, edit sketch. So there it is. It's just a spline. It's underdefined, but it's usually underdefined because it's very hard to hard to staple these guys down. Really. Yeah. Typically, when you're using this for engineering applications, you don't want to have things underdefined. But when you're doing something artistic like this, it it really doesn't matter because you'd spend more time dimensioning than actually modeling in my opinion so anyway extruded a feather colored it green and I just do the same thing for these next features over here so going down the feature tree we have all the feathers and I thought to myself looks great right and we can take out the original sketch over here well not take out let's hide it don't want to remove it. So it's looking pretty good, but then I thought to myself, his eyebrows are looking kind of flat actually. So what I did was I broke out the surfaces. So I did a surface delete. So I took out this top surface over here and sewed it up with a boundary surface just like that. And uh, so upon having that this newly formed surface you have these two openings over here and what I did to close them up is that on this side I used a surface fill and if I turn on my zebra stripes you could see it's a pretty good surface I'm, I'm pleased with it but when I tried it on the other side I tried one surface fill over the entire um, area over here it came out with like a pretty big dimple over there and I didn't like the way that looked so whenever you see that, it means you're trying to do too much with one surface. So what do you do? You gotta split them up. Another boundary surface, extending from the edge of this face to the well recently created uh, boundary surface, and I surface filled those corners up and gave a much better result. Zebra stripes, much better result. and I knit them together and really gives a depth of field as compared to just a planar surface and, and I just do the exact same thing for the other eye surface knit and there you go that's the entire model took me about two hours bulk of the time was his beard if I do find a better way to do that I will let you know in the comments well not in the comments but I'll post another video about it well, with that, I will see you later.